Hello. Hello, everyone. Uh, hopefully Twitch can hear me. You can give me some indication if you can hear me. That would be awesome. Uh, so yeah, welcome to the first ever Twitch stream of They Came From Space. Uh, I'm Scott, I'm producer on They Came From Space and I'll be talking you through the game today and what we're going to show. Uh, sitting beside me I've also got Matt, who's our senior tester and junior designer. Hi everybody. Uh, Matt's going to fly the camera and he's going to make sure that I don't say anything silly. And on screen you can see Zach, he's our designer and he's an alien. Hi there. Right, so yeah, uh, we'll give you a little bit of background and then we'll just get straight into it. So we're still in development. Uh, we're going to show you 100% in-game footage today. We're going to go through the game loop and show you some destruction technology. Uh, right now the servers that we're using are running on Amazon Cloud, that's AWS. Uh, yeah, and we made this because we want to show everyone what kind of gameplay experience you can have when you've got Cloud Compute. Uh, if you're completely new to Cloud Compute, uh, we are Cloudian and that's what we do. We provide Cloud Compute technology for simulations and games, uh, and we're building a Cloud Compute platform for, for developers right now. Uh, it uses existing engines like Unreal, uses existing middleware like PhysX and Havoc, and the tech is completely generic and works across any platform. So that's, that's enough kind of technical detail rubbish. Uh, as you can see, we're flying around in this camera. This camera has been streamed from a, and rendered from a cloud GPU instance, but the rest of the game is all just compute on the cloud. And these are all real clients that are playing on their machines. Uh, the cool thing about this camera is that Zach can actually reach out and grab it and take over. So go ahead, Zach. Yep, so I can just drag it around like a selfie stick and chat to the audience. So we have some lip syncing in the game. So if you're a Twitch streamer, you can just have a chat to your audience while you're doing this and you can just move it around. Or I can just let it go and let the um, your cameraman drive it around instead. Yes, go cameraman, drive for me. <laughs> uh, so yeah, uh, Zach mentioned lip sync there. Uh, you obviously heard them th through VoIP. Uh, we really like the feature camera. We think it's a great way for streamers in VR to still interact and be uh, kind of personable with their, their audience. They're, they're not behind a big headset on the webcam. We can actually almost see them. Uh, so yeah, uh, enough of that kind of stuff. So let's get into the game. So we'll, we'll t tell you a little bit about the, the setting now. So Zach, why are you here? So this is Borley Haven. So this is a lovely 1950s Americana style town that as evil aliens we have invaded and plan to destroy and absorb all the energy that's within every building and car and such like. Um, so we've come here to do this. Unfortunately, someone else has done so also. So a rival alien faction has come and we must defeat them, destroy them, send them back to their own planets so we can have Earth all to ourselves. Okay, great. So uh, we'll talk a little bit about the roles and who people are playing. So Zach is an alien overseer. It's his job to kind of crush the city and gather all the energy and to just have total domination of the planet, take out the other guy and this is his turf. Uh, the little drones you see flying around, those are actually uh, other PC players, so they're not in VR, so we've kind of got VR crossplay just now. Uh, and these guys, their, their job is kind of aerial supremacy and defending their overseer when they're vulnerable and taking down their overseer, uh, taking down the enemy overseer. So right now, actually, if we see Tom uh, flying around, if Tom takes a couple of shots at Zack, Zack's shield is up and Zack can't be damaged. So, yeah, you can tell him what you think of him, Zack. Yeah, come here. So yeah, I'm completely invulnerable, can't take any damage. I'm essentially like a boss monster that you have to do something else in order to drop my shields and defeat. So, as I was saying before, all the buildings are full of energy and between you and your drones you have to go and collect this so if my drones go and collect some of that energy and bring it back to me that'd be quite nice guys some energy please thank you so the point of this energy um, we have all these powers we can use although they don't actually use up energy themselves the main point of the energy is in order to charge a large laser that we can fire at the enemy mothership and take down their shields. Once we do this, we'll be able to um, send our drones to attack them. 
right now he's a bit far away, so I can't reach him, so I can't help. But for the first couple of rounds, we'll be able to have our drones fly over there and take him out once the shields, once we have enough energy, which is now. So if you have a look up at the mothership, I'm going to fire my laser. There we go. And that's going to take down the enemy shield. So my guys can go and fly in and try and attack him. I'll let Scott show you a bit of the action. Yeah, so, so now that uh, Fabio, who's uh, art director on our project here, his shields are now down, his drone should be coming to his defence. He can pick up debris and use that as a kind of shield. Uh, and Zach's drones are heading over and trying to, to blast them to bits. So the drones have got a couple of different weapons. They've got a kind of rapid firing laser machine gun that does only a little bit of damage. And they've got a kind of heavy uh, missile. Uh, the missile is actually a homing missile as well. Uh, so if you lock onto your target and fire that, as long as you keep them locked on, uh, the missile will track towards your target and take them out. Uh, if we actually just take a quick look back at Fabio, uh, we are, you can see his shields are back up, so after a certain point, of, uh, a certain amount of time, uh, things reset and uh, his shields go back up. Zach? Yep, so now I've taken the enemy shields, I have the opportunity to teleport. Um, just to warn you here that pretty much all the effects in this game are placeholder, and this has very few. So I'm going to teleport my overseer closer and my mothership. So normally the overseer can only move around under the mothership. Um, you have a teleportation like a short range warp and similar way to Robo Recall. Um, we're still playing around with different movement mechanics. Um, but right now it teleports what we have, but you can only do that under your mothership. So as you gain energy, you attack the enemy mothership, then you teleport closer to a new area with lots of buildings to destroy and more energy to gather, and you repeat this cycle. But now we're closer, once the shields go down, we can start having a bit more of a personal fight, and as an overseer, I can actively fight the enemy overseer. So we'll have to be dodging each other's fireballs, avoiding various attacks. Um, I may as well go over the powers while I'm here. So the two powers we have by base with our default are Singularity, which is it's like a grip, but it pulls in everything around you, so you can use it to rip up build entire buildings at a time. And this allows you to gather lots of energy to yourself, or potentially other drones. Um, and it allows you to throw things around or use the debris as shields. Um, other than that we have the plasma balls that we were talking about earlier. So these balls um, can be charged and can be used to take out do large amounts of damage or can just be sort of fast fired for very small quick damage um, attacks. And finally for now we have our laser strike. So a laser strike comes from the mothership. It has a fairly high cooldown but will pretty much destroy anything in its path. As it comes from the mothership, it doesn't have that much of a range, it's purely defensive um, technique. Um, but it can be used for air denial, For if your enemy drones are hiding around some buildings, you can take them out quite easily. And it's a way to sort of, um, gather a lot of energy in a very short space of time. Scott? Yeah, so uh, we covered quite a bit there. Uh, we'll have a wee bit of a closer look at one of the drones. So if uh, Matt flies around and we'll see who our first victim is. There's Graham. Hi Graham, if you turn around and you can wiggle your wings it is. Oh no, he's guys. Leave leave Graham alone. Yeah. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Donald's your new target. Okay, right, so Donald, yeah. So uh, the, the flight model is, is quite simple, so it's kind of like a, a UFO slash drone model. Uh, so if, if Donald lets go of all the controls, uh, you just stay still in space. You you don't need to you don't need to manage gravity or anything like that. Uh, you can move uh, forward, back, and kind of strafe left and right on the left stick, and you can climb and descend with the the bumper buttons on the gamepad. Uh, drones also have a, a boost that uh, makes them go very quickly, but kind of reduces the how manoeuvrable the, the craft is. So it's good for covering long distance very quickly, but not good for precision flying. So the games progress quite well. We're the two overseers are getting closer and closer together, so that must mean we're getting a bit closer to the, the end game now. Uh, the game that does have a time limit. Oh, shields are down. So Zach's doing well, he's not taking much damage. Fabio's definitely taking the, the brunt of it. 
Nice. <laughs> so, yeah. so yeah, when you're playing as a overseer as the aliens attack, it's very much you feel like King Kong, with sort of hanging off the top of the Empire State Building while enemies attack you in biplanes. Uh, you can use things to block, um, or missiles especially, even though they're homing, you can dodge them. So you just have to make sure they're coming and just try and dodge out of the way before they hit. Um, right now, as an overseer, you're fairly reliant on your drones for defense. Your fireballs are, don't really move fast enough to hit the enemy drones, but we are working on many more powers that will allow you to sort of fight back and protect yourself as well. So yeah, we'll, we'll let the guys keep playing just now, and uh, we'll see who, who comes out on top for this round. I could use a bit more power actually, guys. Oh, there's my laser. So yeah, both, both shields are down now, so even when your shields are down, you can still fire the main laser on your mothership. Uh, and kind of even the odds. So I think the, the green team are about to win if they just focus fire for just a minute. I'm sure they can take out Fabio. Nearly. Keep going. And there we go. Fabio's dead. So that's, that's the end of one round. Uh, we, we don't have a, a massive amount in the way of ceremony and end game presentation just now, but that's, that's all stuff we, we can add later on. Uh, and Fabio looks <laughs> rightly sad that he lost. So what we'll do now is uh, I'll bring up another uh, feed and we'll just kind of uh, have a look at that and I'll answer some questions and we'll get set up for the next round. So we'll be back in a minute. So yeah, uh, let's let's have a look at chat and see if there's any questions. Is this running on the cloud? So yes, this is running on Amazon cloud servers, also known as AWS. But yeah, the technology will work on any cloud provider, any platform really. It's it's just a case of of what game developers want to do for it, uh, want, want want to use it for. Another question there: uh, Is this also for PSVR? Uh, we don't have a working build with PSVR, but again, there's no reason why we, we can't do it for PlayStation. Uh, right now, today we're using uh, Oculus Rift and Touch. Uh, we really like the touch controllers, uh, but there's nothing stopping us running on PSVR either. Uh, so yeah, if some other wee bits of info just now. Uh, we are running on Unreal Engine 4. Uh, the physics engine that we're using is PhysX, which is part of Unreal these days. Uh, and we've also added our cloud and cloud compute technology on top. And that's what does all the distribution to the cloud and allows all these thousands of chunks. Uh, on that note, actually, I got out my calculator early on and added up all the physics entities in the world. And there is just over 99,000 physics objects in the world. So if you're wondering why we use cloud compute, it's for that, like the almost 100,000 objects moving at any one time. You just can't do that locally on any hardware. Uh, okay, so we're back up, ready for the next round. So I'll bring the feedback in. I'll just adjust the volume down so it's not too loud on top of us. Okay, so we're just waiting on a few more people joining and then when they're all in, they'll kick off the next round. So yeah, the art style, uh, we went for something quite simple. We didn't want to be uh, too kind of heavy on realism or texture detail, because a lot of that is lost in, uh, in VR. Uh, simplicity is definitely king. Uh, there's lots of moving objects potentially as well, so you need all the, the shapes to be nice and clean and quite readable at, the distant, at, at quite a distance. Uh, but we've tried to fill it with quite a lot of props and vehicles. All the signage that you see here is destructible as well. The trees are actually physical. 
uh, we'll get one of the guys to, to fly over the trees and you'll see the, tra the trees bend away from, from his craft. Uh, I'll just remove the overlay there. All right, so I think we're off. Yeah, so we have, we have a look at Tom now as he gets closer to those trees. They're a little bit rubbery, yeah, but it shows that like you can do anything when you've got cloud compute and you've got all this physics uh, or any kind of processing power available. You can do lots more than you could do before. So yeah, I think we'll just let the guys go on with it. So we'll head over towards Zach, I think, and see what Zach's up to. going to butt in and say, Zach, you need to turn on VoIP because <laughs> we can't hear you. No. <laughs> Technical difficulties. So I'm going to send Matt out to go find Zach and help him turn on VoIP. Sorry, Mike yeah, was there we go. We're good now. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah, so I'm just grabbing as much energy as possible right now. Um, hopefully, Donald, if you go over and try and harass the enemy, so one of the Sort of main choices the drone can make early in the gameplay is whether or not to help the overseer collect energy or go over to the enemy overseer and try and take on his drones and steal theirs. So you get a bit of back and forth and a bit of early choices to make there. Oh. Fortunately we've not done too well and we're going to be under attack now so the guys sort of have to come back and help. Alex. Yep, so at this stage, Zach's vulnerable, he shields down the, the Trigons, the purple team they're attacking. Uh, his team seems to be a bit kind of all over the place, not really helping you. That's a bloodbath. <laughs> so yeah, Zach's still just over half health, but uh, we can see just in the distance, the other team, Fabio, he's still pretty much at full health. My turn to attack now. Let's go. So yeah, in terms of uh, setting, theme, uh, we've went for a kind of 50s America B-movie sci-fi alien invasion, which is a lot of words in a row, but it, it means we could be quite humorous about things, like that's why there's giant hot dogs and the little UFO on the billboard. Uh, it, it means we, especially when we've got a physical world and all these props, we can have nice big fun props and we, we want to explore things like being able to use them potentially as weapons or they could be power-ups. If you go through the world and find a big burger, if you can hit your enemy with it, then something happens. So that, that attack did quite a bit on Fabio, he's down about half health. Zach's moved over, so it's about even just now. So Zach, what are you up to just now? Well, I'm trying to keep this big building intact so I can use it as cover for when my shield inevitably goes down. But now I'm being attacked again. So I'm just grabbing some uh, bits of debris to use as missile shields since all the enemy drones seem to be attacking from the same direction. And hopefully my guys will take them out before they do too much to me. Okay, so I'd say a couple of questions. I'll just cover those quickly. Is there friendly fire? Uh, not just now, but you can you can unintentionally affect your own team with uh, with physics. So Zach's got that singularity uh, kind of grip power that will pull in any object, no matter if it's a friendly or enemy. Uh, is it possible to add stats to the screen to, for Twitch to see who's currently winning? So I do have a little overlay that's, that's just very rough and ready, so I'll turn that on just now. Uh, so we can see at the top there, uh, green team, which is Zach. He's got a little bit of health remaining and the shields are up just now. Fabio's doing much better. The blue bar underneath the coloured bar at the top is their level of energy. So Zach's just filled up. He's now firing. It looks like Fabio's filled up as well. So it's getting a bit kind of oh. intense. So I'll turn that off again. I have to teleport. <laughs> 
Uh, another question there, can you crash the planes into each other or the ground? Yeah, uh, if you do that a lot you'll probably damage yourself and you'll explode. Ah, I lost. I think that was close, I think it must have been just by the skin of your teeth you lost that one. Okay, so that, that was another round. Uh, so we'll uh, uh, get ready for the next round, so I'll switch the feed again and I'll take any questions. Okay. So while we wait on any questions coming in, uh, we'll talk a bit more about one or two other things. Uh, so the the VR player is a is, is a physical presence in the world. That was something we definitely wanted to do. Uh, a lot of VR games, rightly so, just have like a, a head and two hands, uh, some kind of connect the arms and things like that, which is fine when it's VR playing with VR. But when we've got the kind of VR crossplay, and we are letting kind of traditional players play with VR, they might not understand or have any experience with VR. So the whole kind of brain in a jar concept uh, worked quite well. So we we the head of the alien tracks the the headset, and the controllers uh, your hands move the kind of mechanical arms that are attached to the cockpit. And uh, yeah, it's it's really quite cool, especially with the legs stomping around. Uh, and that also means that we can do nice things like facial animation. Uh, the little alien's actually got a little cockpit inside, so he's got little levers that he's pulling and pushing. Okay, that's our game back up, so we'll switch back to the feed. Okay, so we're just waiting on people loading back in, and then we'll kick off another round. Uh, and while we wait on that, we'll have a look at a couple of questions. Uh, are you planning to support more than two giant aliens? Uh, it's not currently part of the design, but we've actually been carefully building the game in a quite modular fashion, so that if we do want to add a third team, or maybe it's two alien overseers uh, seers per team, that's something we can definitely try out. And especially with cloud compute, uh, there's no real limit on the like how 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 hard we go with physics. We, everything's scalable. If we want a bigger world, we make a bigger world and we add more servers. Uh, well, so can we get maps based on real life locations? <laughs> Example Dundee. So uh, shout out to Dundee and the games industry up there. Uh, sure, why not? The like maybe some sensitive issues with destroying well known buildings and landmarks. We might might avoid that. Uh, what's the tick rate on the server? Uh, physics. So, right now, I think the physics tick rate is uh, 30 frames per second, and then we in. interpolate that and back into uh, the game, fight. which runs at a higher frame rate on the client. Cool. Okay, I think everyone's in, so let's kick off another round. Let's go, let's see if we can win this one. Oh, I'm getting a message in my ear about the physics tick rate. It's actually closer to 40 FPS just now. So what are your tactics this time round, Zach? How are you going to win this, this round? Uh, try the same thing again and hope it works this time. <laughs> so yeah, come on, let's see if we can get some energy. Oh no. <laughs> We've not, already been well. shield taken down. <laughs> right, I'll try and find some. Oh. and jump in front of the missiles, guys. <laughs> it's my only chance. Oh. Okay, so we had yeah. a good question there from uh, literally a ghost. So when the alien disappears and reappears, is that a teleport? So yes. Uh, we're still quite early in development, so we don't have a lot of kind of visual effects and things like that. Uh, we've got a few ideas about adding some kind of particles or having you see them kind of warp very quickly instead of just blink in and blink out. 
Uh, so yeah, it's it's not game weirdness. I promise you, it's it's the teleport mechanic. We're also looking at different ways of moving around, so it might not always be teleportation. Right. Okay, guys, shields down. Attack. That again? Come on. So yeah, well, while we're flying around, we'll maybe take a closer look at one of the destroyed buildings and we can talk about that a little bit. So, uh, building destructible assets in-game is, is very different from building normal assets. You tend to build normal ones outside in, and the inside tends to be empty. But uh, in, in destructible games, you need to kind of build it inside out. You need to build floors, you need to build walls, put the roof on top. So, yeah, it's, it's very different experience in terms of game development and building for it. But there's plenty of tools there. The physics engines all support destructibles. More people should, should use it, it's awesome. Oh, come on. <laughs> Get him. Okay, we just have to use attack. Just, just fight. <laughs> <laughs> You're not doing terribly. He's at half... Fabio's at half health, right. but... Get him! <laughs> well, it's gonna be close. Oh, oh your shield's back ah, up. Again. Yeah, it's over. Oh, no. Uh, it's over once more. Yeah, we weren't doing too good that time. What, what does it mean when the game designer keeps losing every round? <laughs> <laughs> As with all team-based games, I blame all my teammates. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, cool. Uh, we're going to set up for another round and keep going. Uh, and I'll take some questions in the meantime. Uh, okay, so are the clouds affected by physics? Actually, I think you've found the one thing in the game that's static. <laughs> not actually a physical object. So, uh, yeah, like there's nothing actually stopping us making that physical. But, yeah, it, it may be weird. I don't know. Another question there, could you put props inside the buildings too? Uh, yeah, sure. We, we can put anything inside the, inside the buildings, so you could have little props or power-ups, things like that. Uh, we've went for right now uh, destruction at scale rather than fidelity. Uh, we want to see basically how big we can make it, and then we can always go back and uh, try and add more detail, more detail to the interiors. But we, we tried to play the game at not too high in altitude, but you want to see the, the scale of what's going on rather than be sitting at one wall trying to pick one hole through the wall. Uh, so yeah, while well, we're waiting for the feed, uh, we will ask you basically like if, if this kind of thing is good uh, on Twitch, we'll happily do more of that and just show you progress as we add more features to the game and uh, more things. Let's bring the feedback up. Uh, we we're also happy to do like ask me anything sessions. Uh, we could get some of the actual developers to sit down and uh, do a kind of couch session again, kind of questions and answers. Uh, another thing actually that uh, we quite fancy doing is uh, either finding some local streamers, uh, either on Twitch or YouTube, and invite them over to the office. So if there's anyone watching just now that is local, that fancies a trip and <laughs> doesn't mind being live on Twitch, you can give us a shout and we can see if we can work something out. Yep, so we're just waiting on everyone joining again and we're going to start off another round. And Zach, I believe in you this time. I think we're nearly there, <laughs> and uh, I'm, I'm hearing some whispers that someone joined the wrong team, so it's even more yep. stacked against you this time, Zach. So it's four on two. Right. <laughs> yeah. Let's do this. Right. We don't seem to be very good at the defense thing, so let's just go all out attack.
one little nice touch actually there as uh, Matt was just flying past Fabio you saw the the alien's eyes actually focus on on Matt and follow him around uh, that was like a little feature that we added that we thought you know might not do anything it's actually really cool so whatever's kind of closest to him or most interesting to look at the game will work that out and uh, sync up the eye tracking to, awesome. to look at you right let's go guys <laughs> I <Back. have> you. <laughs> Right, straight up. <laughs> so the most amount of damage you can ever do to an enemy in one round is about a third of his health. So even if we do really well here, They'll still get a shield up eventually. Oh, that's our shield. <laughs> this kind of works. I'll just grab, <laughs> grab the enemies. Right, add you. Are we with you? Back up. Nice question coming out. How come the aliens are still breathing when their helmets get smashed up? They just hold their breath for like really long time they, and they just hope that their shields come back up, otherwise they're gonna die. It's not the war of the worlds. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're not afraid of bacteria, it's alright. Cool. Zach's working pretty hard this round to try and win. <laughs> uh, I'll bring up the overlay again and actually see how it's, how it's going. Oh, it's, it's going well. He's winning. Fabio's not too far away from bringing his, uh, his laser round again, though. Oh, this could be close, this one. Get him! Ah, oh, his shield's back up. Right, time to run. Next question there about using the buildings as cover. Yeah, you can absolutely do that. You can, uh, we've, we've had lots of playtests where people do just cover behind buildings to try and stay safe. But you know, you can use these same as I've got right now to, to uh, block any incoming missiles and even grab the opposition themselves. Yeah, unfortunately we've kind of run out of buildings over here. Um, but that's part of it. As as the game progresses, it sort of brings itself to natural climaxes. Covers destroyed, and there's less place to hide. Places to hide. Right, if we get some energy, I think we only need one more to get this. Come on, guys. Yeah, bring it to me. There's a building over here, still alive. Ah, there we go. So that was the game entering overtime, so now both our shields are down. And... Oh, I lost! No, you killed each other. Darn. <laughs> but I think you were just a split second <laughs> after. Ah, darn. Well, that was closer, I guess. So was yeah, fun. That was a pretty full-on match. I don't think there's much left standing at all. Yeah, okay, there's cool. the one build in the middle and that's it. We okay, will... well thanks for coming, guys. Okay, so I think we've got time, we'll maybe go one more round. Okay, so we're going to just set up for the next round. Uh, probably going to be our last one. So any other questions while we're waiting on uh, setting that up again? I'm guessing you know Tom then. <laughs> uh, so yeah, well actually one other thing that uh, someone asked about uh, before uh, was uh, little humans and NPCs. 
so they're they're not there just now. The, we did have them. Uh, we actually just removed them so that we could work on other features, but we're planning on adding them back in. And again, they'll be like a they'll be another source of energy. Uh, one really cool thing that we were looking at is a uh, is kind of like a deeper Twitch integration. So uh, Twitch provide uh, a way for you to kind of communicate through back into game. And we've all seen kind of Twitch plays Pokemon and everything else. So one thing that we were looking at is potentially using Twitch chat so you guys could type away and have that affect something in game. So whether that be uh, maybe spawning a natural disaster or dropping a power up for one of the team members. That's that's something we're, we're looking into right now. Uh, we actually do have a build with the chat working. You can actually show the chat in game to the overseer. So if you were a streamer and you, you obviously got your headset on, you can't see the chat this would be a way uh, to see the chat and be able to respond in stream. Uh, question here, can you pick up or destroy the trees? Uh, we can. Uh, we actually made the decision to make them permanently attached to the ground so you get that nice little kind of rubber effect of the tree. But there's nothing stopping us being able to, to break that connection and have them as weapons or have tons of trees flying around because yeah, there's quite a lot of trees in the, the game. Right, I think that's ready. Okay, I think we're ready. Yep, that's everyone in. And I think I remembered to turn on VoIP this time, and I'll pick the volume. Okay, I think we're we're good to go. Okay, maybe now I have a full complement of drones, I might be able to do it this time. Right. Right, come on. Like Zach needs to win this one. Let's go. Right, Zach, what's your tactics this time? What's, what's going to win? Well, last time I did well with the just straight out attack all <laughs> the time. Oh, um, and I almost won despite only having two drones, so we can see if we try that again. I'll just go all out attack. And we'll see if that helps. Oh, well, they got the laser charge first time, unfortunately. Still time to hide. Yeah, here's, here's a cool little thing we can talk about. So, right now, all the powers you've seen, the, the fireball and the singularity and the laser strike, uh, maybe Fabio could fire off a laser strike so that if anyone's not seen that, we can have a look at that. Uh, all these are just triggered with button presses on the controller just now. So, uh, one thing that we, we learned a lot from Toybox, which is one of the previous titles we worked on, is with touch controllers and just VR controllers in general, being able to reach out and pick something up is, is a great experience and especially when it's things like a, like a, a little space ray gun thing, it's, it's just so obvious how it's meant to work and what you do. Another thing that works really well is actually picking up a controller that's actually the same as your controller in real life. So you pick up an Upfields Touch controller in game and then all the buttons are correct and you could use that as like a little remote control to guide you know, maybe some kind of missile thing or some other power up. <clears throat> yeah, it's all about placing you in the world, and, and like you say, in Toy Box, when they do use, I think it's for a remote control tank, you're using the same controller, and it's it's kind of uncanny. Sorry. It's good. Okay, another question: Do you plan to add any fluid sims, or is focus on rigid bodies? So, if anyone's not sure what a rigid body is, that's in physics terms. That's just a, a solid mass that doesn't change. So it's not fluid. It's not deformable. Uh, so right now the game does use only rigid bodies, but we are investigating fluid sim, definitely. Uh, especially with all those nice mountains, and there's a big dam actually in the map. If Matt can pan round, you'd see there's a dam just over there. I think that would be pretty awesome if you could destroy that and have a whole bunch of water come down. So right now that's just a, a nice bit of scenery, but we could make that into a gameplay element. I think that would be pretty cool. Let's not forget, you could... Uh we wanted to turn the observatory into a giant bowling ball that could <laughs> yeah. career down the hill. Yeah, it's super hard to oh, destroy the observatory though. It takes quite a lot of time. <laughs> Come on. Oh. 
Now that <laughs> is when the overseer accidentally grabs you. And they take control. Aye. Oh, shield's back up. Right, okay, we need to get the shield down and we might have a chance. Well, it's going to be tight again. Right, just energy, guys. Let's go. Right now, we've kind of run out of buildings, so I'm looking for cars. Cars can get quite a lot of energy for the drones. Alternatively, drones always have some amount of energy themselves if you destroy them, so you can always focus on fighting the enemy drones. Come on guys, bring energy to me, I'm almost done. If you have anything, just couple close. Right, let's go. Get him, quickly. No. <laughs> oh, come on! <laughs> Is that three, uh, three for three losses? That's four for four. Oh, the first one wasn't really a... Uh, that was four. That was four, actually. Ah, well. <laughs> All right. Well, well done, Zach. Very, very close, though. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> okay, so... Uh, that's that's all we're kind of show, going to show just now in terms of gameplay. Uh, we're going to come back uh, later on, so uh, check out our website for the next stream session, which is later today. Uh, we'll put up the details on, on Twitch shortly. Uh, I do see a couple of questions that I'll quickly answer before we, we head off. Uh, can you grab an enemy dome or enemy drone? Uh, yes, if you use Singularity, the kind of uh, gravity pull power, you basically can pluck them out of midair. Uh, who else asks? Can overseers walk into the sea and hide underwater to hide from their opponent? Uh, I think they can. It's not actually that deep, so I don't think they, they will to hide too well. Uh, but we, I think the, the water does do damage to drones, or if it doesn't, it shortly will. But uh, yeah, the, we don't want that to be a, a hiding place. It would be great to have some John Williams S soundtrack playing in the background. <laughs> yeah. So all the audio right now is, is placeholder. Uh, we're, we're definitely not audio designers. Uh, so yeah, if, if anyone's out there and has got some good ideas for audio, you can get in touch. Uh, who operates the mothership beam? So the, the overseer triggers it. So once they've got enough energy, uh, energy from all the chunks they've picked up, uh, the mothership's ready to go and the overseer chooses when to fire it. But all the targeting is done automatically. It just targets the other mothership. <laughs> the other alien has three eyes, that's unfair. Well, it could be unfair both ways. That's like an extra eye to get poked out. Yeah. Okay, right. If there's no more questions, then we'll stop streaming just now and we'll be back later. So, yeah, check out the website and check out Twitch channel for the next session. Thanks for watching, guys. Yep, see Thank you later. You. Oh, wait, oh, there's one question just in time. <laughs> Does the Overseer get any feedback from the game in the hand controllers? Yes, so there's haptics. Uh, that's pretty much all the feedback as you get through a controller, isn't there? Yeah, so it vibrates in different ways and styles based on the audio that's playing and what powers you have selected. Okay, so Edinburgh sneaked right in at the end there. So, we'll see you again later, guys. Bye-bye. <laughs>